Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to be talking about ketones and aldehydes. Let's start with the ketones. So what ketones have is they've got this carbon double bond oxygen somewhere in the middle of the molecule. Over here we can see it as well, it's in the middle. What I mean is if we have carbons like this and then you've got a random double bond oxygen at the end, that is not a ketone. A ketone must have that double bond oxygen somewhere in the middle. It can't be on the very last carbon. If it is, then it becomes a totally different kind of molecule. So that's all it is. A ketone has a carbon double bond oxygen somewhere in the middle though. What I want you to notice is that every carbon still has four bonds. Have a look here. One, two, three, four. If we have to look at this carbon here, you'd see that it's got one, two, three, four bonds. Okay, so that always, that'll always be the case for carbon. The general formula for a ketone is the following. The number of hydrogens will always be double the number of carbons. We can see that if we look at one, two, three, four, then your hydrogens are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so that's always double. And then we've just got a random oxygen, so it will do something like that. That is the general formula for a ketone. Now, which part of this molecule makes it what it is? Well, it is the C double bond oxygen, but we get lots of molecules that have a C double bond oxygen, so it can't just be that. The distinguishing thing is, is that that C double bond oxygen is in between two carbons, and so that whole part there that I've highlighted, that is the functional part. So it's that, that is the functional uh, group. And that's it for ketones. Now we're gonna look at aldehydes. Now I'm hoping from the previous videos that when you hear the word aldehyde, something in your brain is going side. Aldehyde always on the side. So aldehydes, just like ketones, also have a C double bond oxygen. Now you see why we can't use that as the functional group for a ketone, because it's also in a aldehyde. So what makes a ketone, I mean an aldehyde different to a ketone, is that the C double bond oxygen takes place at the end of the molecule and not somewhere in the middle. So remember your ketone does something like this where the double bond oxygen is somewhere in the middle whereas with your aldehyde that double bond oxygen is on the side. If there was an oxygen here then it's a, typical, uh, a totally different molecule but as long as it's just a C double bond oxygen that's an aldehyde. So the general formula for this one is also going to be the same as a ketone so it's going to be Cn H2N, whoops, and then there's an O. So it's got the same general formula as a ketone, but they're totally different. And that's where we look at the functional part, okay? So the functional group is the fact that it's got that C double bond oxygen, but on the side. And so we've got that H over there. So that's the functional group of an aldehyde. So I hope from this watching this video you've got a very clear understanding of the difference between a ketone and an aldehyde. Both of them have a C double bond oxygen. A ketone has it somewhere in the middle, whereas an aldehyde has it on the side.